You know what's funny? Somewhere out there, there's someone who, despite watching all of episode six go down, still think that Mephisto had something to do with this. <laughs> Readers, I'm not gonna lie. I've been wanting to make a video on Marvel Studios' as Loki since episode one first aired. And just like the rest of both the internet and my fellow YouTubers, the reason why was because I suspected involvement from what seems to be the new big bad of this new saga of the MCU, Kang the Conqueror, since that episode. Now, I will admit that my original Loki Kang video was gonna be a bit different based on how I processed the first episode and the explanation of the TVA. Because the show initially wanted us to believe that the Timekeepers actually existed, I saw their outfits and the display of their heads on the wall of the courtroom and originally thought, oh shit, they kinda have outfits similar to Kang. Then when they explained what a time variant was, I started to think about alternative routes the MCU could go in if they thought ripping the character or characters straight from the comics would be a bit too complicated for casual consumers who aren't aware of his history. So while I was originally planning a Loki theory video surrounding Kang since the release of the first episode, it was more along the lines of which route of the two would sound simple enough for casuals to understand while still working with the MCU. Kang being one of the original timekeepers that rebelled and sought out the destruction of the TVA in order for his plan of multiversal conquest to go uninterrupted, or a time variant who, like Sylvie, opposed the TVA upon learning the truth about the multiverse and, let's just be honest, do the same thing. I didn't decide to make this video immediately because I wanted to focus on the videos that I made for Pride Month of 2021. And by that time, <laughs> the timekeepers had been outed for <laughs> who they truly were. <laughs> and by that time, everyone <laughs> and they mama and them either had a video explaining or giving their opinions on Kang the Conqueror or a Loki theory video revolving around Kang and how he could be involved. And because of the reveal regarding the timekeepers not being real, I decided to keep my keeper or variant theory video about Kang on the back burner until the season was finished because I didn't want to be half-assed about this possible relationship with the TVA. However, it wasn't until I saw Nando's video from Nando V Movies that I took into consideration for the first time that the TVA was the sole creation of Kang's from the get-go. Call me crazy, sure, but the thought of Kang either renouncing or fighting the TVA were more prominent motivations than him being in the man behind the curtain, in my opinion. But turns out, as we've seen in the finale of Loki season one, that's exactly the case. <laughs> Kang is both a time variant and a timekeeper, the only one at that. He, like Nando theorized, created the TVA not to keep things in order and rule the multiverse, but to keep his other variants, especially the one we know as Kang, from escaping. Now, this reveal told the two main types of individuals who are fans of the MCU, those of us who have prior comic book knowledge and those of us who only have the movies and Disney Plus series under our belts, that the variant of Kang we meet in the finale, He Who Remains, is not the version of Kang that the Avengers, the Young Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, or even the Eternals are going to deal with in what I'm now deeming the Multiverse Saga. Pretty catchy, right? If anything, the actual character of He Who Remains, as depicted in the comics, is simply being used as a moniker for this Kang variant that is present in the finale, and isn't really associated with his comic book counterpart. So that begs the question, when it comes to the one Loki and Sylvie met in the finale, which Kang was he? 
Now I hear you all yelling your answer through the computer, the TV, and or phone screen. I know it's easy to decipher. I realized it the moment I saw his ass too. <laughs> but A, I'm doing this for the latter types of MCU fans, just like every other geek and comic book YouTuber out there who wants them to know about the rich history and lore of certain characters, events, and arcs. And B, <laughs> I need the runtime on this video to be significant, y'all. This is literally my job. <laughs> so before I explain which Kang I think it was that Loki and Sylvie met in the finale, let me go over a few of the details that I've noticed over the course of the episode that helped make me aware of who it was that we were dealing with. And the first is the very sanctuary of He Who Remains, which I believe was once the meeting hall for the Council of Kangs that he informed the two of them about during his breakdown of how his variants gathered. Those of you familiar with how Marvel Comics handles multiverse stuff knows that this isn't necessarily out of the realm of possibility. Even Reed Richards, who's going to be black in the MCU, by the way, <laughs> has his own counsel. But if you need a non-comic book equivalent, the, 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 the Council of Ricks, it's, it's the same concept as the Council of Rick, Ricks. There you go, you're welcome, have fun. Now we have proof of this in two forms. The first one being that the hall that I will now call Casa de la Kang <laughs> is literally within the middle of the sacred timeline. And the second being the room of statues within the chamber Loki and Sylvie first meet he who remains. There are versions of Kang dressed in garments similar to the timekeepers. And depending on how far away you are from the screen you're watching the episode from and how hard you squint your eyes, one of Seth's variants looks like Ramatut, the Kang variant that ruled ancient Egypt once upon a time and is a member of the Fantastic Four's rogues gallery. However, there's a statue that's destroyed among them all. And upon watching the finale for the first time, I assumed it was the likeness of Kang that's going to be the main big bad of the multiverse saga. And I mean, it being destroyed makes sense. Because if it wasn't, Loki wouldn't have had this reaction during its reveal at the end of the episode. You maniacs! You blew it up! Ah, oh, damn you! God! Damn you all to hell! So now that we know where the Kangs used to congregate, <laughs> alliteration! We now have to look at the one who created the TVA, He Who Remains. Not only does his title give off the fact that he is the last remaining Kang in this timeline, but his very existence is what's keeping all of the other Kangs locked away. He knows everything that's going to happen up to a certain point. I know it all, and I've seen it all. Has lived for an extremely long time. Buddy, I'm tired, and I'm older. I'm older than I look. And knows that everything he does to keep the timeline sacred would just be repeated by his next iteration of himself if he were to be killed because of how time works in a loop, for lack of better term. You plunge your blade in my chest and an infinite amount of me start another multiversal war and I just end up right back here anyways. So considering that the conflict that needs to happen in order for all the Marvel heroes to come together and stop Kang the Conqueror from bringing about the destruction to the multiverse that he alluded to hasn't happened yet, but will happen if he's taken out of the equation. Not to mention the sheer amount of power it takes in order for him to keep that from happening by having his very vitality linked with keeping the timeline from branching. This leads me to believe that the Kang variant Loki and Sylvie meet who calls himself He Who Remains is actually Immortus. 
As you can imagine, Immortus is a variant of Kang far into his future. In the comics, he's constantly working with the Timekeepers to avert disaster timelines. Which is on par with the reason why He Who Remains has done everything that he has done in order to keep the sacred timeline intact in Loki. He's also said to be the most powerful of the Kangs, considering he's a version of Conqueror years into the future who has seen the error of his ways and tries to stop his past self from achieving his plans. This is also on par with the motivations of He Who Remains for not only keeping the sacred time light intact in Loki, but also regarding how no sources of power from the main universe, no magic, no artifacts, no infinity stones, can work within the sanction of the TVA. Is this the greatest power in the universe? Then <laughs> there is the visual representation. <laughs> He may not have that huge ass hat on his head because apparently the only characters that can have ridiculous ass comic accurate helmets in the MCU are Hela and Loki variants. No, no, Ronan, Ronan doesn't count. It has to project upward. But the purple throw that he wears and the yellow spot on the chest portion underneath it in his outfit properly mimics how his golden medallion pins his purple cape across his upper body in the comics. Like, once I got a good look at him in the elevator, I was all like, th th this, th 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 this, this is Immortus, this is Immortus right here. And if you think about everything that I just delivered to you, it makes sense. As he is currently depicted in the MCU, Immortus, the oldest and most powerful of the Kang variants, is able to create the TVA after the fall of the Council of Kangs upon the multiverse saga Kang's Revolt and attempt to conquer the multiverse in order to keep every other variant but himself out, literally becoming the only Kang that remains in the sacred timeline, tethering his own life force to its establishment in the process. Because if Immortus truly is the most powerful of the Kangs, then he has everything necessary within his grasp to stop an overflow of Kang variants from entering the main timeline. He has to be eliminated in order for the story for the multiverse saga to be told. Otherwise, there would be no real conflict because he'd be able to put everything right back into place. And he alludes that he will put everything back but it will be done in a way where it'll be a repeat of time, either similar or equal to when Immortus initially put a stop to everything and made things the way that they were, which he only knows about because he's done it before, time and time and time again, thanks to the sacred timeline being in a loop. He doesn't worry about dying because he knows eventually he will be born, meet more Kangs, experience the betrayal, live out the multiverse war, and put a stop to the multiverse war by using his power and knowledge to keep the timeline linear to shut all the other Kangs out and will once again hold everything in place until Loki and Sylvie reach him and he offers them the chance of taking his place. And then Sylvie kills him again. And then all of this starts all over again. Thus allowing his variants to enter phase four, such as Kane the Conqueror, as we'll see him in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, possibly Rama Tut in the Fantastic Four reboot that'll allow a Reed Richards focused story because of him being one of Reed's descendants. Riri Williams possibly fighting an MCU take on the Scarlet Centurion that's basically Marcus Kang in a silver Centurion style Iron Man armor in her Disney Plus series, because let's just face it, that's definitely something Kevin Feige would do to link the Dark Avengers arc to the multiverse saga. Maybe Kamala Khan fighting <laughs> Kamala Kang <laughs> in the Miss Marvel Disney Plus series. And just as importantly, a young Iron Lad going back in time to form the Young Avengers to help fight against his older, evil self. 
once the real physical versions of Speed and Wiccan are pulled out of whatever timeline branch Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch traverse to in order to save them before it's destroyed in Multiverse of Madness. The only thing is that when this variant reveals himself as Immortus proper, it'll more than likely be when he helps the Avengers and the other Marvel heroes during the climactic battle between them and Kang in order to start the process of pruning the branches of the Sacred Timeline, where we'll see him in a newer, futuristic version of the outfit that he wore when he first meets Loki and Sylvie in the Loki finale. Now, I want it on record that my boy Nando of Nando V Movies properly predicted about 80% of what went down in the finale of Loki and is more than likely right about how certain scenarios are going to happen over the course of the multiverse saga. So if you want to see his initial thoughts and theory regarding Kang's involvement, you can either click the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen or in the description down below. Nevertheless, readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comment section below what you thought of Loki if you've seen it. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class a Kang variant you want to see make its way into the MCU now that the multiverse saga is underway. <laughs> Whichever question you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.